Hey, welcome to 23 Degrees Sideways. We are very sideways right now. You'll have to excuse this. I'm using a selfie stick for the first time for a video. We have a van. Look at that. There's a blanket on the seat. The upholstery is actually really nice. If you look up, it's got a slight pop top. Um, so it's a good eight inch raise over the standard cab. This is an ancient 1997. You can tell. It has a wonderful television, which doesn't work. Like, we haven't turned it on. I haven't figured out the power yet. Um, I'm going to be working on that in the near future. It's got some little cubby holes and stuff. This, this 8 inches makes a huge difference especially in a Ford. Ford's, um, because of the amount of under stuff under the, the van, they tend to have a very short head space. So um, as much as I like Fords, that's kind of the problem. Also, some models of the Econo line, the engine access is not as good as it used to be. This is a 1997. It's probably the newest Ford van I have ever been in, and it's not as much fun as the previous generations. Nonetheless, it's fantastic. We bought it. Yay. Um, so this is going to be part of the Nomad Project. Now, one thing I want to say about the Nomad Project is that I'm not doing a van life thing. In fact, I was really, really struggling with this decision. Did we get a full-size van? Do we just get a Dodge Grand Caravan, which is a smaller van? You can't, two people can live in a Dodge Grand Caravan. Two people, no problem. It's a minivan, but it has a four by eight foot, it actually has a four and a half by eight foot um, space when you pop all the seats down. They're pocket seats. The seats actually fold down into the body. And if you're doing it full time, you can get take like the back seats and just remove them completely and it makes extra trunk space under whatever you've got. You know, you build a sleeping platform, you've got lots of room. Four, four by eight, four and a half by eight, call it five by eight. That's a lot of space for a small vehicle nomad situation. And I'm not trying to go into all van life all the time. So let's, you know, as I talk about this, remember there's more going on here. Um, part of that is just like the whole van life thing has changed over the last couple of years. COVID really did some, did a number on society, but also COVID did a number on how people, woo, look, I'm looking, I'm playing with camera angles. COVID did a number on how people interact, how people react to nomadism and the idea van life became an actual thing, like a hashtag. Um, a lot of that with COVID, like it was, it was happening before that, but with COVID. And the van isn't the important part. Nomadism is, and you know, the van thing has gotten to the point where you have a luxury apartment that costs $180,000 in a Sprinter van. And I'm not kidding. The the builds over $100,000 are all over the place. And it kind of takes away from the whole concept of, of nomadism. You're, you're at a point where you can't park and leave your vehicle because it's worth as much as a house. You know, you're not... You're tied to things. You're tied to things in a very strange way. Now, it's great for people who, who do it. They're, they're pl there's plenty of advantages to having that much space. The cost is extreme and has some, makes it, it, it has some effects on how you treat nomadism. So here we have the, this van instead of the Dodge Grand Caravan. The other option was to go truck and camper. Because we're doing this with three people, we uh, chose not to deal with the truck back seat in what was available with the cash we have on hand because cash is suddenly a problem. So we're going to work on that as well, see what the universe does. So this is what we have. The bed 
which is covered with a blanket just because we've been working on it, um, is small. I do not consider these good full-time beds. They're about uh, 38 by 60, 61. It's just not very, it's not very long, very wide. It's, I can deal with it. You know, I can sleep in a hammock. I can sleep in a smaller space. I can scrunch up. I don't have to stretch out. And I can stretch out diagonally on that. Um, of course, I'm not sleeping alone. So we'll, we'll see what happens. This, that entire back seat may leave for a bed box if we need to. But probably, probably for the road trip parts of this adventure, we're going to try to camp as much as possible and set up a three-room cabin tent. You know, just like like a center room and then two sleeping areas off to the sides. That makes a lot of sense. There's a trailer hitch for this van and a small trailer, cargo trailer for camping isn't a bad idea. A small pop-up tent trailer is also not a bad idea. Those tend to weigh a little bit more and there's a little bit more going on with them and you have to find a place where you can park the trailer when you're camping. So that's actually that's actually a factor like do you have a place to a spot with a, a trailer spot, an RV spot or is it a tent spot? There are differences when you go to the parks. Um, national parks, state parks. So that's that's a factor. We're going to have to look at that. They are easier in some sense because you don't have to worry about leveling the ground or dealing with the ground at all. Like, you know, well, we'll see. Who knows? You know, if I was, if we, if we were in the right kind of campground, I would do BCs and hammocks. You know, it's, that's, there's no, there's no better way to camp. BC is a battle cruiser. Um, it, Klingon battle cruiser. It's a kind of trapezoidal tarp not tent tarp over over cover um it does protect you from rain and everything it comes all the way down like 18 inches off the ground on the on the wings but it has a lot of open space and they're very very large very easy to set up if you have trees around and they provide a lot of a lot of covered space so I like open air camping as much as possible. Of course, there's always the problem of dealing with other people when you do that. So crowded campgrounds it could be an issue. So we'll see how this all goes. We'll probably do all of the above as we work towards getting the boat off, off the docks um, and exploring nomadism. There's a lot to the project here. This isn't just about... <sighs> A van or a boat or a tent. It's about concepts of nomadism in the modern world, the postmodern, the post-industrial, the post-information age world. We're coming up to a point now where we're dealing with, um, you know, artificial intelligence actively affecting how you travel, where you go, what your research is for how where you stay. The there's a power unit there. See? Jackery. The power systems and the power draws, like for laptops, for information access, for internet access, for TVs, you know, the, the power systems have evolved so much that you would not have been able to even imagine this stuff 20 years ago. You know, 20 years ago, you needed a generator, a gasoline generator to go camping and run a television and a fridge. And now... If you drive for a couple hours and you have a 200 amp hours of lithium, you can do the fridge and the TV and an air conditioner and charge your phone. And that's pretty awesome. That's it's a it's a total change of it's a total change of concept, okay? The big thing that people still have to deal with with nomadism is personal security, feeling safe. And that's a big problem that we're having all over the world in all areas of life. So as we do the Nomad Project, we're going to go explore that as well. Um, this was supposed to be a short video about, hey, there's a van. Woo, van. You know, this is just the inside. I'll put up some photos. I'll be all over Substack and Twitter 
picture with pictures and stuff over time and more videos of course so stay sideways